Blend them together and you have words with music. Hilton Spanager's at the organ, and this is Margaret Kelly to bring you the words. <laughs> Reflecting in their crystal snows the glittering jewels of the night, the mountains lay in calm repose slumbering neath their robes of white. The stars grew dim, a film instead the twinkling heavens overspread, through which their eyes essayed to peer each moment less distinct and clear, till when the stellar beacons failed, a darkness unrelieved prevailed. Out of the ambient depths of gloom, bereft of its accustomed bloom, came daybreak, comfortless and gray, sped the nocturnal shades away, unveiling, with their winged retreat, a twilight sad and incomplete. Reluctantly, as dawn aspired, the shadows lingered, then retired as vanquished armies often yield upon a well-contested field, and sullenly retraced their course before an overwhelming force. Within the east, no purple light proclaimed the passing of the night. No crimson blush appeared to warn the landscape of returning morn, discarding all the gorgeous dyes wherewith the sunset tints the skies, and mingling with the azure blue, the warp and woof of sober hue. The fairies of the air I wist had spun a silvery web of mist, whose texture, ominous and gray, obscured the glories of the day. was the dreary winter's day, which dawned with dull and leaden sky. No cheerful penetrating ray flashed from the sun's resplendent eye. In vain, through rift and orifice, he strove with radiant beam to kiss each mountain peak and dizzy height, apparelled in their garbs of white, and crown each brow so bleak and cold with burnished diadem of gold. Descending in aerial flight, the wheel of fire did not appear to dissipate the fogs of night and clarify the atmosphere. Seeking with fervent ray and fierce the canopy of cloud to pierce, 
The orb of day, stripped of this flame, a circle, ill-defined, they came as through the ever-thickening haze, his feeble outline met the gaze. This faded till his glowing face left no suggestive spot or trace, no corollary on the pall which settled and pervaded all. their summits hid in turret, tower, and pyramid, as stately and majestic mien was nature's architecture seen. From yawning chasm and abyss rose minaret and precipice, carved by the tireless hand of time in forms fantastic yet sublime, while spires impregnable and high were profiled on the lowering sky. Exceeding the tremendous height of Brother Peaks on left and right in his commanding station placed, the giant of the rocky waste with law inspiring aspect stood the sentry of the solitude, guarding the mountainous expanse with his imposing battlements, in rock ribbed armor panoplied with rugged walls on every side, besteamed with countless scars and rents from combat with the elements. He towered with mute and massive form a challenge to the gathering storm.
overshadowing mountain peak in solemn silence seemed to speak a prophecy of Arctic doom. As in his frigid splendor dressed, he reared aloft his frozen crest surmounted by a snowy plume. His wrinkled and forbidding brow, a somber shadow, seemed to throw her other crags, as wild and stern, which frowned defiance in return. The wind, a grubious and sad and doleful accent, soft and low, mourned through the dismal forest. Clad in weird habiliments of snow, as if forsooth a sylvan ghost had mobilized in pallid hosts to haunt their rugged solitudes, the specters of departing woods. And with uninterrupted flow, the streamlet underneath the snow answered the wind's despondent moan with plaintive gurgling monotone. Or locked in winter's storm embrace, no longer trickled in its bed, but found a frigid resting place in stationary ice. Instead, the crystal snowflakes gently fell in robing mountain, plain, and dell, in mantle spotless and complete as nature in her winding sheet. Layer upon layer fell fast asleep and deep till every cliff, abrupt and steep, was crowned with coronal of white. by reminding you that Hilton Spanager was at the organ and the poems you heard were excerpts from The Passing of the Storm by Alfred Kastner King. We invite you to listen again for Words with Music. Until then, goodbye and good listening from Margaret Kelly. United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.